All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back. Live stream is up and running. Uh, looks like that went down earlier this morning, unfortunately, about three o'clock in the morning or so. I don't, I'm not for sure what's going on with that all the time. Always tends to go down around 3.33 or so in the morning. Anyway, welcome back. It is a new day, Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. It's about 11.35 a.m. here, California time. Latest quake shows a 4.3 earthquake into the area of the Indonesia Islands region. Latest quake. Still seeing some uh, clustering going on here. Also a little bit of movement there across the Taiwan area, just north of Taiwan. Or uh, outside of Taiwan, I should say. Uh, looks like maybe inland, about 17 kilometers here below the surface for a 5.2 occurring uh, roughly about the time my uh, live stream went down. What else we got here far as um, large scale movement overnight? Well, it's a little bit quieter compared to yesterday. We did see that, uh, of course, that 6.3 coming in yesterday evening. Western Afghanistan, since then, we've seen a handful of uh, micro, or not microquakes, but aftershocks here. Some uh, fives and fours in this area. Odd region. Most of the earthquake activity has been, uh, at least historically, been over here in this area, eastern areas of Afghanistan. But this, along with a couple other quakes here in the past week or so, put a little surprise out here in this area as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, not a whole lot of historical larger quake activity in this region. Yes, over in Iran, but specifically around this area, not so much. And this is the area that we've seen quite a bit of uh, movement here over the last seven days or so. 19 earthquakes, including, check this out, three 6.3s. Three, 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 add those up. Oh, goodness. Get some numbers there. Uh, and also some uh, quite a few fives and fours in that mix as well. And, and like I mentioned, this is a rather odd area to see the earthquake activity. So something's brewing between all that activity out there in western Afghanistan, the Izu Trench activity and swarm. Uh, it's it's a definitely uh, an odd one, a head scratcher to see where this is headed. And we'll continue to watch that, of course, as uh, we look at today's activity. Not a whole lot uh, brewing down here in New Zealand, although, uh, let's see here, we did have another deeper earthquake there overnight. Actually, this morning it looks like 4.3 into the northern edge of the Kermadec Trench, 511 kilometers deep. Uh, as far as movement down into the New Zealand area, I'm really not seeing it. Uh, last night we did see activity south and north of the New Zealand area. I was expecting that to move overnight. But it doesn't look like uh, anything's taken place there yet. Let's go over here to the GeoNet servers, which are right here. There we go. And see what's going on down there. 4.3, there's the, um, uh, looks like that's off the North Island area. Potentially the Kermadec Trench region, 43 kilometers deep for that 4.3. Uh, aside from that, it looks like mostly smaller microquakes out there around the New Zealand area. A look at the seismograph drums. Well, there's a 4.3 from yesterday. Uh, but aside from that, general seismic activity here across New Zealand looks pretty absent for now. Continue to watch that area. Out on the big island of Hawaii, still seeing some movement out there across Kilauea Volcano. Uh, looks like uh, yeah, about two kilometers deep or so. The wording yesterday, let's see if we can bring up that wording again, see if they've updated that or not. Um, they didn't, but, uh, yesterday's update here on Kilauea Volcano, uh, mentioned here that, uh, the inflation at the summit of Kilauea remains at about its highest level in over five years and, uh, has nearly returned to the level seen just before the last eruption back on September 10th of this year. Uh, elevated seismicity is being recorded beneath the south end of Kilauea caldera and extends to the southwest along the trend of the 1974 vents. Um, an eruption in the region of the, of the area to the south where the 1974 vents uh, occurred, uh, occurred uh, could emerge with little notice one to two hours during peaks in this activity. So it looks like these guys maybe are thinking or leaning towards 
uh, a return of these older vents here from 1974 in this region here. Um, keep an eye on this area, I would say. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Let's double check stuff here. Let me go over and check out that camera in this area of the uh, crater region, Lava Lake area. Uh, let's see, I got to zoom in a little bit. See if I can pick that up. There we go. Ooh, we got the uh, annular eclipse coming up soon here, folks, on the 14th. I'm going to make a separate video of that here in the coming days, maybe today or tomorrow. Uh, and uh, that will be nothing but information on the eclipse that's happening. We'll take a look at the percentages around various cities across the states here where they'll be seeing it and what it may look like and time and whatnot. So it'll be an all-in-one type deal uh, when it comes to the annular eclipse. Um, cloud cover, uh, we'll take a look at that as well. It may be an issue uh, here for us on the West Coast. Here's Mauna Loa. Nothing going on out there. I'm just trying to find a uh, uh, station that's looking right at the lava lake area, lava crater. There's still some volcanic gases coming up. Doesn't look like there's anything unusual noted. Um, see what this one is. There's another view. Looks about the same. Nothing of unheightened, of heightened activity. Except for that earthquake swarm uh, just south of the region. Continue to watch that though. All right, uh, yeah, so look for that video, the uh, Eclipse video coming out either uh, today possibly or maybe tomorrow, one of these days here. Um, we'll have that up on the channel. Uh, earthquake activity a little bit across the Mount St. Helens region. This has been just an ongoing thing. No changes, no uh, unusual activity. Uh, let's double check that though, right? Always want to double check stuff when I feel like it. I got to... You know, something gives me a, a a thought in the back of my head. Go check it out. Just double check. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to look at the uh, Mount St. Helens gas stations out here. Not the gas for fuel, which is pretty well elevated out here in California, by the way. Uh, carbon dioxide levels increasing here over the last few days or so. Um, also, let's see what else we got. Past month, carbon dioxide, there's a little bit of elevated activity. Sulfur dioxide looks to be minimal for now, at least here in the last couple days. They do have little trends depending on which way the wind's blowing up there. Uh, but for now, I don't see anything abnormal going on as far as any major increasing activity. Uh, earthquake activity, a handful of smaller quakes. Again, remember some of these are very small, like a 0.1. Not a one magnitude, but a point one. So that's a fraction of a one magnitude. So some of these are, you know, extremely small, but there's still quite a few of them out here across the Mount St. Helens area. And it's been off and on here for, oh, I'd say a little, little over a month. Uh, California area, not seen anything major kicking off overnight. Uh, pretty quiet for the most part up in Northern California. Handful of earthquakes out here in the southern portion of the state. Mostly smaller microquakes, though. Let's see what we got for the 2.5 map and above. A little bit of activity in Nevada. One 2.9 down south here into the Los Angeles area uh, outside of El Monte region. And uh, looks like a handful of people picked up that uh, movement. 2.9. Not a big earthquake, but uh, a little bit of shaking being felt out there in the Los Angeles area. Aside from that, the uh, San Andreas Fault remains quiet for now. The rest of the country pretty quiet, aside from some older movement quakes there from yesterday. And uh, what do we got down here off the coast of Mexico? 4.2, about 3 o'clock this morning or so in uh, one of these fracture zones. This is the uh, Pacific Plate and the Cocos Plate boundary. South America region, a uh, handful of smaller quakes there. Last night, not really seeing anything major kicking up there, though, today. Um, let's see here. South Sandwich Trench got a little bit of activity. Is that the South Sandwich Trench? Let me look here. It is. Nothing showing up on the USGS map, map though. Interesting. 5.2 down here, just prior to the plate boundary. 
Uh, that could amplify some conditions out here across the trench itself. Keep an eye on this area. This earthquake uh, looks like it's pretty recent. Let's see when this came in here. About 9.23 this morning, so a couple hours ago. I'm surprised the USGS hasn't picked up on it yet. Maybe they haven't got to it. Maybe they just haven't reviewed it for, for themselves, but hopefully they put it up there. Um, let's see, any other nor abnormal activity? The Izu Trench here remains quiet. We're not really seeing too much activity up there now. After uh, quite a few days of elevated movement, things have just magically stopped. That was a lot of energy that was produced out here, and we have to look at, literally have to look at the last um, 30 days, because the majority of this here was, I think, just over a week or so ago, so it's not going to show up on the seven day, but there's a, you know, if you look at this map here and get a number, we're looking at 126 earthquakes, and we've seen some sixes in here as well, a whole bunch of fives and fours and threes, and I'm sure twos as well, but uh it's not like the sixes kicked this off, you know, like say we had a 6.3 and then we had, had a whole bunch of aftershock activity. Then I could see one saying, yeah, you know, that's aftershock activity. It's typical for some, uh, you know, some six pointers, but these six pointers occurred literally, um, right in the middle of the mix of activity. If you really look at what started off, maybe it was a 4.5, couple fours, and then the magnitude started to increase. We've seen a six or so, six point, uh, there's a six pointer right there in the mix and then a couple other sixes in there as well. So it wasn't like a main quake and then aftershock activity. Um, that's why I thought that something's much bigger out here was about ready to pop and it still may. Um, but for now, this is day number two of quietness out here. We'll just continue to watch. It's rather odd. All right. Uh, Anything else major going on out here across the globe, across the flat scale earth? Some movement out around Turkey, it looks like. Um, aside from that, let's see how today goes. Just get a weird feeling on occasion here that something may pick up again. Solar weather activity. Well, it looks like we had a couple sea flares overnight. Very low low grade sea flares right here and i bet you that's from that sunspot that is saying see ya that's out here across the western edge of the sun western limb of the sun 3451 barely visible um we do have a handful maybe a little bit more than a handful numerous sunspots out here that are showing some signs of life whether it's going to be enough to produce any major flares we'll have to see in the coming days right now i'm not seeing it but we are showing some growth within quite a few sunspots out here across the southern hemisphere of the sun. It's going to be these right here. And um, potentially um, a good number of ones up here as well. Notice last night 3461 was pretty quiet. Today, uh, getting a little bit of growth within that uh, region. We'll continue to watch that though because all these are uh, looking like they want to increase in their complexity, which would mean some stronger flaring coming up in the days ahead. Right now, though, 95% chance for a C flare M flare at 35. And the X flare potential, around 5% chance. Uh, the KP index out here on the Aurora field, geomagnetic field in Aurora, is pretty minimal. As you can see, there's not a whole lot fairly minimal. I know I use that pretty word a lot. It's just part of growing up out here in California. Yeah, it's pretty hot today. Yeah, those are pretty good steaks. Those are, yeah, that type of, <laughs> that type of uh, language. All right, minimal activity up there across the polar regions and down there, I should say, as well. Severe weather outlook today. Well, there's not a whole lot out here. We do have a portion across tech, or, uh, Florida that is in the slight risk category. 5% chance for tornado probability there from those thunderstorms. Looks like some wind threat as well. That 5% does cover Tampa, uh, St. Petersburg area, and Orlando. So just a heads up if you are out there. And it looks like maybe tomorrow as well, a little bit of enhanced weather out there in Florida and also portions of eastern Nebraska and eastern uh, Kansas area. 5% up there in Nebraska. Goodness of tornadoes. I'm not mentioning it here though on the map. Well, Omaha's in the 2%, but... Uh, there's a good portion here in the five as well. So just a heads up for tomorrow's 
severe weather threat and let's see if these numerical models have changed at all i do like to check these on every run just to see if we got any major pattern changes right now it's 71 degrees out beautiful day i'm going to take the kids to the uh you know take the kids to a corn maze today i think they'll like that we try to do that every year i'll post some video up a little bit later pretty fun event nice and cool 71 degrees or so today we've got another low pressure coming into the west coast as we head into the friday area now this could play a part on the eclipse uh, taking place this weekend it may obscure my view out here unfortunately i'm still going to be up live streaming it um, but this could be a bummer if this happens to uh play out normally i'm not a complainer of clouds and weather but i wanted to see the uh the annular eclipse these are cloud bases uh here's visibility now that may have something to do with with uh fog low clouds i don't think we really have to worry too much about that cloud base I want to look on uh, Friday. Here's some clouds coming in. Goodness. Um, that's Friday afternoon. And we're going to check this again in our uh, later video. This is Saturday at 1 or at 7 a.m. The eclipse is going to start taking place around this time. Um, and that is some bad news here. There's a little bit of opening here. Um, but I don't know looks like Winnemucca out here might be good this is going to be the main path of the uh, annular eclipse for the ring of fire uh, but this is still a couple days out that could change out there as well um, but it looks like potentially here in northern california we're going to be out of luck far as um and even then look at nevada out here nevada's got quite a bit of cloud cover as well clouds um so we'll check back on that texas area looks like they're in the clear because uh, that eclipse is gonna pretty much go down in this type of effect there with the hand as far as the uh totality of the ring of fire other portions outside that zone we'll see you know like a sliver of a of a sun but we'll get into that a little bit later uh in the video itself i'll just make a specific video regarding everything um, on the eclipse and i'll put it out um, either today or tomorrow all right folks i'm going to jump off here have a good day and uh, i think i'm off to the corn maze live stream is up and running again it went down around oh, i don't know three o'clock or so in the morning uh, we'll just continue to bring it up if it does happen to go down so have a good day enjoy your wednesday and we'll catch you guys back here back here a little bit later now's a good time because i got hiccups peace out